Danke, vielst du Burg. Are you applying it already? Are you applying it already? Uh, well, <laughs> the on resume doesn't really seem to be working. Uh, but, um, yeah. Um, oh, that's because I'm not resetting the state to zero. I'm done. Uh, well, I am uh, having this text view, and I want to have like the um, illusion that someone is like typing in it. And like it's mm. just getting. So you have the like cursor blinking, trying to get the cursor blinking and uh, cool. doing something and trying to make it a little bit more impactful so the US scales every time you look at like push a key, like that yeah. kind of like from cool. software. Yeah. Bit. So uh, when the tap's like Okay, right, right, right. Yeah. And kind of yeah, just um look at uh interpolators, there's a bound interpolator that you can set, and that would be played at the yeah. end of each animation. So if you have a very short running animation, you can see if it well, What I'm thinking is just uh, bumping up the scale uh, really quickly and then resetting the scale after it's done. Cool. That's, yep. And rotating it a little bit in a random direction or something. Or you could just um, repeat the, um, yeah, once you set up this base animation, you can just repeat it quickly, right? So yeah. that would be one way as well. I so mean, it's literally just run it for like uh, five milliseconds. Okay. Or ten, That's something, something like this. Just remove the flying out for a second and then we... Because now it, um, it runs, uh, it inserts a new character every 70 milliseconds. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of works. So I'm using okay. spaces to have pauses in the timing. Yeah. Uh, so whenever the other person that would have a written a message like isn't saying something, that's just showing it up. Yeah. yeah. It's just showing a space. So cool. So that is a bit long here. Repeat counts so of fifteen is a bit long. Oh, <laughs>
Probably put that part not on the stream, um, I guess, to you know maintain your. Um, so um, I mean, to some extent, um, but um, we need to have three meetings anyway. So we had one in class environment, and uh, if you're comfortable with doing so, we would do the second one in the very same session. So where we just uh, capture, ah, gaining students. That's good. Um, um, uh, where we just, you know, um, yeah, collect more notes and so on. So, uh, so we have a kind of a coherent write-up of all the different um, um, meetings um, as part of this course. I'm not sure how we do it after the um, exam. Probably it would be a post-exam meeting, to which you obviously all invited, uh, but hopefully um, um, also show up and to, to give some input, which is quite important. Um, okay. Um, yeah. What can we? Um, any any positions, good, bad, ugly, just the usual characteristics that I like to differentiate between. Uh, last time we briefly talked about the dissociation between labs and lectures to some extent, the um, unequal marking of, uh, sorry, the unequal weightage of the labs and in, in some stages, uh, some spaces, uh, lack of instruction with respect to the labs because they're quite different in their complexity, so quite varying their complexity and uh, also consideration of the different uh, levels but also degrees that are involved here in this course uh, to align this a bit better was the idea uh, yeah, and uh, one of the comments was also to ensure that we have uh, you know properly allocated breaks um, so those were the ones uh, upon brief review that i saw just now um, other comments that you want to get uh, across now is a good point in time No feedback? No? Nothing? No? Did you get any? What happened in the meantime? Not much really, right? Didn't it? Ah, there's some. Well, my personal opinion is yep. that I like, instead of having like a deadline for all the labs, just have lab one deadline, then lab two, two, three, four weeks later, instead of having them uh, all at the same time. Yeah, then you yeah. can just wait until like last week and do them all together instead of having just a continuous workflow. So yeah, which is fine. 
That's the, my opinion, though. I'm not sure. Yeah. My 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 my, my um, um, well, I see a point. Uh, I like and I think it should be done that way. But this course is a third year course, so we would expect that to uh, be part of the time management uh, that you impose on yourself. Please. Um, I wish we were making more clear that the labs are part of the final grade earlier on. Okay. Yep. Okay. Like last week, that when you started talking about how you will grade um, or set the grades better. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. What else? I mean, that's uh, it's reasonable. The expectation is reasonable because uh, we are technically obliged to do that anyway because uh, it's it's uh, part of the course, the contract, right? So uh, you're entering the course with certain expectations, and but need to know the the, the API, which means the assessment, right? Yeah. So when you deliver and what's the feedback you can expect? You're right. So uh, yes, we need to work on this. Uh, very much so. I agree. Please change the name of labs to hand-ins. Okay, so perhaps, uh, yeah, that is probably not a bad idea. Double clear that it's actually supposed to be hand in Cool, yeah. That's, yeah, so to clarify that. So. I hope that captures that somewhat. Yeah, okay, ish. Other views? I can turn around, perhaps I get more. <laughs> the free pizza every now and then was nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, more free pizza, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yes. Uh, but it will be interesting if you show that to the HOD. That would be an interesting uh, uh, discussion there. Free pizza? Where did you get the free pizza from in the first place? So, um, yes. Um, yeah, it happened so that there was uh, uh, habitually a, a seminar next door, right, from security, and they uh, generally had uh, pizza there. Yeah. I guess it's a richer department, so if you want to, you know, shift your uh, focus on security. No, no, I think they have a lot of externals there and so on. Um, yeah, other points? I think some of the aspects are captured here. The iOS thing, we discussed that. Um, um, mm, anything else? Anything perhaps not lab related? No? Else I will talk about transitions, up to you. Do you prefer that or transitions? <laughs> well, come on, this meeting is supposed to last uh, 45 minutes, so you need to give me something. No, I'm just kidding. Um, so if you're good so far, anyway, if, if something comes up or you have some intuition you want to share, I, perhaps at the end of the session, sometimes it's not easy to, you know, uh, um, um, come up with those ideas immediately um, then uh, feel free to do so I'll just uh, add this into the wiki then afterwards or if you can can you access can you modify the wiki by the way yes should be able to right so you could possibly 
edit yourself. I'm not sure if it's the proper way to do things, but uh, it probably would work, um, I suspect. I mean, we, 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 no, we have the history anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Yes, you, you can edit it you, yourself because we can read. Well, we shouldn't be able to retrace it, so pointless as well. So ideally, it should be as anonymous as possible. Um, we possibly also add an issue, maybe? Pardon? Um, yeah, yeah. Or, or simply edit, but now the, the concern is there that in principle whoever adds it is identifiable individually, and that shouldn't be the case. That's part of my strategic reason to let, let you sit in the dark so I don't see you really. Um, so I don't know wh wherever um, comments are coming from. Good. So let's create that page. Okay, Morphe Pizza. That's the essence of the course. Okay. <laughs> what did you learn about the course? We'll see. Okay, uh, I think the, I like the pizza idea, um, and the rest makes perfect sense. I agree. I'm angry. Yes, um, making the assignments clear in the beginning is definitely something to do, and the rebranding is a good idea. It probably will help because in uh, I agree in um, other courses you're probably used to ha having labs as a discretionary, uh, uh, you know, um, tool like in graphics, right? So we don't really look at your labs. You just do it if you want or need. Um, on that note, for the exam, different course though do the labs so, uh, before the exam. Anyway, um, okay, if no other comments, I'll just lose a few words on transitions because they kind of neatly fit with the animation scheme. Um, yeah. So, um, <coughs> any questions regarding the animations bit? That's relatively straightforward. I just w wanted to point you to directions so you don't, go if you see tutorials, you find a lot of them on view transitions, uh, view animations, and be careful with those things. So with the anime, using the anime, create your own classes with their variables and just use the uh, animator as long as you have both set and get that's right variable. yes yeah so if you have you um, that's precisely why I call um, property animators uh, yeah property animators because the only thing they care about is modifying the properties of any object of choice right as long as you have setters and getters on an object you can modify it and they don't even need to be visible you can still modify state even though uh, 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 that it will not actually render an animation as such, right? So it doesn't need to be attached to a view. Yeah, so it could be, I don't know. Yeah, that's right. That's the uh, flexible thing about it. And it can be an object you de uh, developed, of course, as well. So it uses a uh, reflection in the background. So basically, um, identifies the, um, the class of a given object um, and, and then ex it ex uh, inspects the uh, class with respect to its members and looks for all of which contain both set and get for a particular property. Yeah. Also view property animator that lets you play several at once? Uh, yeah. So the prop yeah, of course. So the property animator then in combination with uh, animator sets, right? So uh, the neat part is, uh, I briefly indicated this here, you can nest the sets as well, right? So you could have a um, for example, a coordinated uh, play of those scaling animations, the first one here, so the one that operates on scale X and scale Y, you play those together, but not start them at this stage. And uh, this animator set, set scale then is added to the um, second animator set, scale and fly out, which plays it then together, right? Or sequentially, of course, right? So you have, um, this is like your, your way of orchestrating. Let's see how that looks. Um, so, so that's the flexibility you kind of uh, have. There's more options, of course. You can, uh, um, we talked about repeating. Um, okay, so it's basically sequence. Yeah, so you see the sequential execution now uh, reasonably uh, clearly. Uh, is there anything else on animator sets that's relevant? Yes, the interpolator uh, may be quite um, interesting. Hang on, let me try something just to highlight this. Mm. I'm sure I haven't tried that on this one here, but let's see if... Um, Set scale is an animator set, and I want to set an interpolator that basically uh, shows certain behaviors. So um, there is quite a bit of them, but this is quite intuitive <coughs> one. We'll see what it if it actually works properly, and I probably should start the stream again.
Okay, we're back uh, with the stream. We just had the um, reference group meeting informally and that may still continue uh, if we want to, but we're back into uh, just discussing briefly um, some animation aspects. So let's see. Um, no, I don't really see it, so let's do it individually. One and set interpol no. set interpolation new bounds interpolation. Just want to try um, show you an example of an interpolator. Hopefully, works. Um, Hmm, doesn't seem to do much. A bit of a bounce. Thing. Did it bounce? Did you see it bouncing? Yeah? That's a, okay, okay, that should have happened, exactly. So, but that's the idea. So you can interpolate that have some additional animations at the end of the overall animation or they interpolate between time. For example, one other interpolator which is um, quite, quite useful is um, the um, accelerator interpolator so it actually speeds up over time so it starts slower and then speeds up the in into, uh, the the animation yes but the bouncing one is basically bouncing at the end of the uh, uh, animation as well and you can of course write your own by implementing the inter uh, the, the, the interface um, interpolator interface and edit simply similar to the reverse uh, interpolator we just had right so you have some Interpolation mechanism, you need to figure out what to do with it, right? You get a value uh, and then you need to um, uh, perform the, some sort of um, transformation and then uh, pr uh, provide the result back to the user. Um, cool, so sets, nested sets, sequential execution, parallel execution, um, property modification, um, interpolators. Yeah, so that's, those are roughly the elements you want to use uh, at best anyway. So it's uh, most of that um, is somewhat covered. One aspect uh, before we, um, because I fear that we run out of time otherwise, uh, is just to look at um, the idea of uh, transitions because there are also forms of animation, um, of course, and um, let me just minimize this. Um, there should also be discussed briefly so you have some sort of um, idea. Again, the pain there comes down to the fact that Android has developed well, so many versions with so many different device forms, factors, and so on, that there's also a lot of different ways of doing transitions. And my intent here is, again, to show you the easiest um, uh, ways that you can probably um, use them as far uh, as I've um, explored and observed. So the first thing, um, transitions and animations, or anything, any rel resources related to that, are held in a resource folder as well. So it will not be obvious from the um, um, from the base set of resource folders that are available, but there is uh, another called the animation folder. You can't just create it in the you can't just create it in the file system itself. You actually need to create it via the UI, so it's properly added to the build system as well. Uh, otherwise, your system won't uh, do what is expected to. And um, just to show you. The, the brief idea of how it um, how it works behind the scenes patience really to work on my Zen here so there you go okay um, all right so transitions uh, between activities so the idea is there. Um, we need to have some sort of uh, the animation folder and then specify the, anima the transition animations in, um, in, in XML, right? So using the fixed format. For example, here, um, yeah, what does that animation possibly do if you guess? Uh, want to guess? Yeah. Anyone?
see symmetric. Any guesses what this will probably do using looking at the terminology and the um, properties? Um, can you repeat that? Yeah, you sure? I'm guessing translated to the left by a hundred percent of whatever P is. Okay. Um, so translation, yep, that's uh, uh, the keyboard, which the, the, the translate keyword gave it away, probably, right? The direction, just think about the direction again. So the idea is quite straightforward, right? So we have a translation that takes a, uh, you know, um, takes a particular um, a fixed uh, um, amount of time. So it actually references back to the default medium animation time provided by Android. You have a long and uh, um, a short one as well. Um, so it's good, then it's all managed by the system and not so much individualized by you, like we did right now. We hacked it all into the uh, code. Uh, and then it's an X translation from delta minus 100%. So meaning out from outside of the screen, um, device independent, um, onto the screen. So it's basically, it should be a slide in functionality that you have. Yeah. Okay, um, so so we need to have this kind of uh, specification and there are heaps out there on the web. So you can just take them, modify them, you know, adjust them to, to, to your likings. Generally those slide activities are probably quite uh, amenable to um, uh, modifications and general use. But also they have one advantage because they kind of um, are good for navigation. They actually guide the um, the, the, the user um, through the application, um, those sliding um, transitions are quite intuitive in that respect. So um, the key, the key of actually uh, initial or setting up the, uh, the, transla the transitions, uh, transition animations in the individual activities is simply to override the transition animations uh, functionality. Of course, you can all specify it in, uh, in, in, in XML, um, but um, this is not as device independent um, um, as it possibly should be. So, um, so this should be the easy, quite uh, relatively straightforward way. I'll copy in some of the transition animations that I have at hand. So, <coughs> let's see. and then I'll just show them to you. Um, oh, that didn't go well. Ah, got my API is still. trying to copy files. Yeah, OBS is uh, taking quite a chunk out of my uh, CPU time here. So, okay. Come on, can't take that long. I really don't feel like typing XML right now, but uh, let's see. I have to, I don't know. All right, so let's do the error prone typing from hand kind of approach. Let's see how it goes. Um, don't type XML, no point. So again, that wasn't planned. That was just my system uh, not cooperating. Ah, came back to me. So, good. Override. So, 
Okay. Thank you, Windows. Um, right. So um, this is the basic idea, right? So you have an XML file, and you um, specify an animation set in this case, but we only have one animation in there, which is the translation you just saw, for example, and uh, a f you know a few other ones. So you can basically uh, add um, yeah new animations uh, um, quite flexibly here. So and the idea is now. Um, if you, for, for example, have a transition between different um, activities, so let's have another one, main activity two. Yeah, not a class, but an activity. So extends activity. So, cool, that's about right. On create. About right as well. Okay. So. Um, going to import this one here. Now, so uh, now I need to do it because I also need to have a user interface. So I probably need to do it the proper way. Um, otherwise, we don't see much if we do animations. It's very boring. So activity and empty activity, and we call it main activity two. Uh, we don't want backwards compatibility in this case, and just add it here as well. So okay, cool. So now we have the content view and everything else. Um, and the idea is there now that you can basically just go as simple as straightforward as uh, overriding the, yeah, that was that. Uh, my build system is updating. And what you see, you have two op options here, is one is to specify, I hope that's somewhat legible, the enter animation, the exit animation, so you can override the animations that are associated with this particular uh, activity and you just identify them quite straightforward using this very, uh, Mechanism. I'll just pick some random ones right now here. So, yeah, and then, um, slide out there. So, <coughs> right, so it still doesn't help me further. Obviously, I need to start the activity. So, let's pick one of the other um, buttons. Create an intent. Um, intent. New intent, intent, and then this is get application context, and then main to activity class, and then start. Intent. So. But instead of putting it in the, we, we put it later in a different uh, context, instead of putting it here, um, you can actually specify it whenever you start the secondary uh, activity. Important thing, however, is you need to specify it after the calling start activity. Because only then the activity will be resolved, and then only then the uh, animation will be associated with the particular activity. And we'll see if that actually works. So I pick button two, I hope that's that one here. And there's something going on. So there was some uh, uh, resemblance of an activity, at least for moving in. So let's see, slide in. So now we have a relatively clean uh, activity um, transition um, that we can use. And you see by intuition it actually helps with user guidance, right? So because we can indicate direction, so you have the navigation case. But you notice when you actually turn press back, uh, it will still have the default animation of just uh, fading out to the bottom. So we need to um, override that as well. And um, how do we deal with this? Any intuitions?
Yeah, you're asleep. Okay. Um, admittedly, it's Friday and it's me talking. That's two reasons to be asleep. So, um, right. So, well, you use the on back press, right? So you override the button functionality. Uh, and then you can override the associated um, transition as well, right? So same pattern here. You just iterate through and just. I actually didn't follow systematically what I what I uh, chose there. I just chose random animation because the principle really is uh, the only thing that matters. And then you have sort of have a somewhat fluent interaction between different activities and have some sort of transition as well. So if you have an application that uh, uh, is complex and uh, warrants multiple activities, especially with your user interface somewhat uh, clocked up a bit, um, then it's quite handy to have actually transitions handy to know, to give the user an indication which direction he or she actually moved, right, in navigation-wise. Up, down, left, right, and so on, right? So you can have a kind of virtualize the surface if you, if you um, 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 want. So you seemingly have more um, estate by uh, providing this functionality. Um, hang on, the activity itself, the main activity itself right now doesn't have, call it unimbutton demo, that's the default uh, approach. Of course, if we want to have the, um, the main activity itself have this functionality, we need to use it in the on create. Again, all that stuff is specifiable purely via XML as well, but again, largely version dependent and uh, kind of buggy. Um, and sometimes functionality is simply not available. All right, so that went well. So we actually saw the, the uh, enter uh, animation for the animation button thing. So that was different. Ah, there was the re-enter animation. So I think I need to clear that out properly. build this properly. Should see a slide, yeah, some slides seemingly happening uh, there as well. And then we can navigate further by going to the application and finding our way back. I think there were two animations overlapping, one of them of the um, <coughs> second animation, one of them of the first animation. Anyway, um, so yeah, so it's basically quite straightforward, right? So no magic, right? So if you want, so you can actually, uh, uh, re refine your your um, your transitions and interaction with your system. Again, um, the only thing you actually uh, need to consider is that you need to create a resource folder from the um, IDE and add the corresponding animations here. So and then you know mix and match them, use them in your application if you like. That's um, yeah, that's pretty much the core of this. Is there anything else I wanted to share? Right. Yes. Um, so Android, in addition to that one, um, I put the slides up and they have a lot of links that actually point to the Android resources associated with all those elements. Whereas, uh, I must admit though, the one for the property animations is actually not super uh, uh, um, c clear because it points into my view very different directions of configuration. So whereas if you stay, take the straightforward way, it's actually quite easy to have uh, property animations, but they will guide you through a lot of XML and um, um, a configuration and then linking it to Java code and so on, which seems overly complex. So it's probably just easier to define it in your application itself. Um, in addition to those individual transitions uh, that I just showcased here using the animations for uh, um, selected activities, you can also um, combine this and have transitions that are applied to a, um, to a, to a scene. And that means to um, um, basically that you define a, a layout as it should be defined in the beginning and at the end and then um, apply a mechanism that mitigates this transition and then you can have those uh, scene transitions applied to your application so it actually changes the layout for example in a sophisticated way um, over time and um, it also applies across the hierarchy of, ski uh, of scenes as well so if you have multiple activities you can apply uh, a fixed set of transitions to those ones and do those across a hierarchy as well, right? So if you have um, um, nested activities, for example. So that's uh, one of the other more advanced features that you can do with uh, transitions as well on top of those simple 
uh, swipe in, swipe out animations. Because right now with few activities, like the ones you probably have, which is probably two or three activities, I guess it's very straightforward to do it by hand. But if it's a bit more involved, then it's worthwhile looking at the, um, um, the, the description as provided by um, Google in that respect, because they're quite a bit more involved and also cover the relationship to the um, material design specifications um, and how far um, transition, how long they should last, how um, what you should avoid and which ones are um, desirable. Internet, be with me. Yes, it's coming. So that would be a good thing to um, think about so you can group animations um, and basically, yeah, create complex layouts where you have actually a, a first scene and a second scene, and you want to facilitate the, uh, the, the, for example, you want to change the order in which those uh, elements appear. So in this example, we have a relative layout. I'll just bring in the zoom in a bit. Um, a relative layout with two text views, for example, and you want to swap the order. So you define two scenes, scene A, scene B, in which the order is uh, inverted, and then you just combine those um, and um, and create a scene basically, right? So and uh, then you can apply particular um, transitions to those. So again, it's about fading sh um, some sort of um, the, the tr transform uh, default transition um, animation that's associated with this. So that's another way of going about it, right? So you can change the user interfaces and have the system decide the default uh, transition. So it's quite convenient if you want to just specify one form tr of transition apply to all your uh, activities or your, all your layouts, if you like. Cool. Um, yeah, so have a look at this. I mean, I put the slides up and the links are all in there if you're interested anyway. But I think from a lecture point of, uh, from a, from a, from a, um, practical use point of view, um, the examples that I gave probably should be reasonably clear. Please. So with the transition between the activities, yep. could one of them be like a null value? So you only have like only the slide in, not the slide out of the yeah. activity? Uh, it will, yes, you can do that. But if you do that, then you have, uh, you fall back to the default uh, transition, which is just uh, fading out to, bo uh, sliding out to the bottom. So then you need to have uh, transition animation does, that does nothing basically, no variety. Nothing. Yep, yep, you would need to have a, um, I think, is there something like destroy, I think there's an explode um, um, animation you can look at, <laughs> which is which is uh, uh, spreading all directions, uh, but I think a simple vanish um, um, approach, um, I, I'm not sure, I would need to look it up. Um, you, you, you would overwrite the default transition. Yes, that's right. So, uh, but you need to specify one, otherwise it will use the system default, which is, uh, as you saw, but, and it can change be between different phones, right? So it could be um, different for the pixel uh, emulator that I have here, as opposed to a Nexus, for example, right? So it will always fall back. If nothing specified, system defaults. Any other thoughts? There's not much magic here, I think. Anything else I want to point you to? Anyway, if you want to use um, animations, um, think about using them wisely. And there's a lot of um, different uh, animation XMLs out there that you can just use. Just be mindful when they give, when they give instruction on how to use them. That's sometimes inconsistent. And especially if your tutorials point to Android 4, um, that's kind of uh, um, uh, uh, to be used with care. Everything we, especially the latter part, we have been looking at is uh, from Lollipop, meaning Android 5 onwards mostly, yeah, um, in a fully functional um, way. Okay, um, good. Other than that, I think I'm done. Um, reference group ideas, any more comments you have in mind? If anything, put in the wiki. Um, next week, a similar pattern, so if you want to wrap up your uh, uh, labs, you can do that on Thursday. Uh, of course, there will not be explicit new content. Um, uh, on Friday, we'll probably look a bit into um, um, uh, graphics on Androids to some extent, how it's different from um, um, the OpenGL course that you, or OpenGL that you, for example, know, but also perhaps a bit of outlook um, what's coming next, um, perhaps even after Android, because there's some developments on the horizon that uh, point to Google changing its direction possibly. So we'll look at those things. 
Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Um, so thank you for your uh, for attending in the first place. Cool. Um, yep. I need to grab Yona in a second.